It doesn't matter the cuisine. I am a sucker for a rich, delicious sauce, and I have to put Pipion Verde right at the top of that list. Also known as Mole Verde, it's one of the seven famous moles from Puebla and Oaxaca, Mexico. With the perfect blend of spice coupled with some toasted nut flavors and roasted veggies and herbs, it is so good and a definite must make. We're gonna start off by prepping up some chicken so we can get it ready to simmer in that goodness. Sound good? Let's cook. I'm gonna start with one whole broken down chicken into individual parts, breasts, thighs, drums, and wings. You can see how I do this in detail in my roast con pollo video. This gets you way more bang for your buck. The chicken was about four and a half pounds or 2,041 grams. After boning it, I'm down to about three pounds or 1,360 grams. Now the best part about this and why I love doing it, you've got a leftover carcass, which is perfect for chicken stock. Just freeze it until you're ready to make some. Next, let's season the chicken on full sides with coarse sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. I'm taking it over to my cooktop where I have a large rondo pot. I'm going to add in three tablespoons or 45 grams of avocado oil. Let's crank up that heat to high. Wait till that oil begins to lightly smoke. This is perfect. Now what we're gonna do is add in the chicken skin side down. I'm cooking it for three to four minutes per side or until I get a beautiful golden brown just like this. Try not to crowd the pan because we wanna make sure we sear it, not steam it. Doing this is gonna go the extra mile in the flavor department. Once they are perfectly brown, we're gonna take them out and set them to the side. I've got a really cool trick for you here. Now at this stage, you could stop right here, add in some water or chicken stock and cook it the rest of the way. Boom, you'd be done. Totally fine to do it that way. But here's a little chef tip. What if we add some mirepoix to there, maybe garlic, a little bay leaf, then chicken stock? Oh my gosh, this chicken will be that much more flavorful. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add in one peeled roughly chopped yellow onion, two ribs of roughly chopped celery, two peeled roughly chopped carrots, we're just going to cook that. See all that good fond on the bottom? We're gonna scrape that out. Once we add it in there, I'm next gonna add in two garlic cloves and one bay leaf. Let's continue to scrape and saute for about four to five minutes until it gets lightly brown like this. Then I'm going to add in 10 cups or 2,365 milliliters of good chicken stock. You could also use water or veggie stock. Now generously season this up with coarse sea salt, fresh cracked black pepper, and of course, taste it. It should be delicious. This is going to be the braising liquid for our chicken. So once it's tasty, grab our chicken, put it right back in there. We're going to add on a lid and cook it over medium heat for about one hour. When it comes to a lot of the vegetables for this pipi on verde sauce, I think there's a better way to pull out more flavor by roasting it instead of boiling it. Doing this will make those flavors that much more intense. And in addition, make the sauce that much better. Here's how we do it. So I've got one yellow onion, which I want to quarter after I peel it. You could also use a white onion, a sweet onion, or even a red onion will work perfectly. Next, I have seven fresh tomatillos, about medium size. Just peel off that outside peel, place them on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper with the onions. Then I have two poblano peppers cutting off the top. Then what I'm going to do is remove that inside pith and seeds. Now, the pith is not very spicy in poblano, so I don't mind leaving a little bit of that in there. Slice it in half because we're going to be roasting these up. I wanna make sure all sides get roasted. Next, I have one serrano pepper, which is spicy. Slice off the end, slice it in half. Then we're going to fillet off that pith where all the heat is, and that will carry over to the seeds, so I'm removing the seeds as well. Adding that to that sheet tray, also adding on two garlic cloves and drizzling on three tablespoons or 45 grams of avocado oil. You could also use olive oil, no problem. Then we're going to season this with coarse sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Once it is seasoned up, we're taking it over to the oven, cooking it at 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 218 degrees Celsius for 25 to 30 minutes or until it's nice and browned up. Since this is one of the seven famous moles, let's talk about this for a second. The word mole comes from the native language Nahuatl of the Aztecs, and it just originally meant sauce. Now, there are some moles out there that are much more complex in flavor and ingredients and others that are simpler. Regardless, there's still so much more to learn, especially for me. And I'm so thankful to get to continue on in this journey with you all, especially when it comes to the rich tradition of Mexican cuisine. So let's keep going. 
In a non-stick skillet, I'm going to add in one teaspoon or two grams of cumin seeds, one teaspoon or two grams of peppercorns. We're going to cook this over low to medium heat for three to four minutes. We want to toast this up and bring out some nice aromatics. It's going to make the flavor that much more intense. I'm going to pour it right into a mortar or a large bowl. Next, in that same pan, I'm adding in one half cup or 70 grams of sesame seeds. Likewise, low to medium heat, three to four minutes, it'll start to brown up real nice like this. Adding it to that same bowl, pan back on the burner. Next, I'm adding in three quarter cup or 90 grams of pepitas or pumpkin seeds. We're cooking these until light brown. Same thing, three to four minutes is all it should take while frequently stirring and moving everything around. Add it to the bowl as well with everything else. All right, last go here. Pan back on the burner, three to quarter cup or 90 grams of peanuts. My favorite word in Spanish, cacahuates. Now it's gonna be really hard to find raw peanuts, so it's okay to use roasted. Doing this just gonna bring out more flavors. Adding it to that exact same bowl. I'm gonna go over to the countertop now. I've got my pestle here. I'm gonna grind this down. Yes, you could do all of this in a food processor, but this is the authentic old school way to do it. So you know me, I'm about tradition. I'm gonna do the same thing and grind it down until it looks just like this. Now let's grab our roasted veggies out. Perfect timing, they look nice and browned up. Let's add all of this goodness right into a blender. Make sure to scrape all that juice and deliciousness in there as well. Next, we're gonna add in all of our crushed seeds, nuts, and spices, and adding in four leaves of romaine lettuce a half cup or 120 milliliters of radish greens, one cup or 240 milliliters of coriander, or we call cilantro in the US, then one teaspoon or a half gram of dried epizote. If you can get fresh, use two leaves. Now, I've seen quite a few folks out there use green leaf lettuce instead of romaine or even spinach. I've also seen parsley being used. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because don't get so locked into the greens that I use. There's one thing that I've learned about Mexican cuisine, similar to others out there, is there are going to be different versions and flavor profiles depending on who's making it for the exact same recipe. It's totally okay to have some variation there. Don't worry if you don't have epizote or anything like that. We're taking that blender back to our cooktop where I've got this chicken cooking. Looks excellent, smells awesome. We're gonna take out roughly two cups or 480 milliliters of this chicken stock adding it right over to the blender. This is gonna help move everything around when we're trying to blend it. Now take the blender, add it to the base. This part is crucial. When you put on the top, remove that centerpiece, okay? It's really hot and a lot of steam can build up in there. If you turn it on, it's going to explode. So what I do is remove it and then just put a towel over top. We are going to blend this on high speed. Start off with low, get some things moving, and then start to crank it up a little bit. It should be nice and green, it should be thick, it should look just like this, perfection. We are gonna take this and add it to a separate Rondo pot. This is about medium to large size. And then there's a little bit left over in that blender top. So I'm just gonna add in a little chicken stock, give it a little swish and put it back in there. Nothing goes to waste here. Season it up with coarse sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Give it a mix, stir everything around because remember we really didn't season it before we blended it but it should be delicious because guess what? At this stage, we're gonna go fish out our chicken in our braising chicken stock liquid. We're taking all the parts out of there and we're putting it into our pipion verde sauce where it's going to braise a little bit more and infuse more flavors. That's why it needs to be seasoned up and delicious. We are gonna cook this over low heat for 20 to 30 minutes to marry some of those tasty flavors. So yeah, the leftover braising liquid from the chicken is phenomenal. It's a delicious chicken stock. All you need to do is strain it. You can use it in soup, sauces, whatever. Always great to cross utilize when you can. And I wanna say thanks for bearing with me when it comes to pronunciations. You know I'm not the best at them. And when it does come to recipes like this, I wanna let you know that I really do relentlessly research each one. I read articles, I watch interviews, look at recipes, I even open a book. Can you believe it? I wanna make sure I get it to as close as the original as possible while trying to pull out as much flavor as possible using the fundamental techniques that I always preach. Now, this is great served up with a little Mexican rice or even a roast blanco, but here's how I specifically played up this pipion sauce with chicken. Now the sauce by itself is incredible, it can go with pork as well. So I like serving this up in a bowl, adding on several different parts of the chicken, the breast, the thigh, the drum. Then 
I definitely recommend pouring on a good helping of this sauce. It is so delicious, so unique, so flavorful. Then this isn't classic, but what I'm going to do is just garnish with a few more toasted papitas and then a little chopped fresh cilantro for some nice bright green flavors. And oh my gosh, I'm pretty sure you're going to love this. Such unique flavors in this dish. You get these wonderful nutty flavors up front and then towards the back, just a hint of spice. Very well balanced, very delicious. I definitely think you and your family are going to love this. Now, if you like stuff like this, you are going to love my chicken tinga. That is such a fantastic recipe. I've got a great video. I'll see you on there.